Hello, it is me, or I, Greg Bosson, speaking to you from the year of 2014. How are you? Uh, I am fine. Thank you for asking. Uh, so this is the quick tip for the e-newsletter, quick tips, uh, that comes out uh, hopefully this week. And uh, although you may be watching this on YouTube, but anyway, you can sign up for the newsletter if you'd like to. So this month's quick tip I thought I would make relevant. Now, here we are. It's January. What's the first thing, one of the first things you got to worry about in January uh, if you are the bookkeeper or the accountant type, or maybe you're not, but you have to do this anyway, uh, is you have to worry about getting 1099s out to all of the independent contractors. And those 1099s are due January the 31st, by the way. So at least the copies that go to the independent contractors. So we need to get this done. So I want to help you. So uh, now you could pay somebody to do it, but it's real easy to do in QuickBooks. So let me show you how to do it. Okay. So here we go. So here I am in QuickBooks. Uh, so first thing we got to do is turn the feature on. And by the way, I want to remind, I want to tell you so you're not worried. What I'm about to show you is what you'll need to do to get 1099s out and you don't have to have it done at the beginning of the year. You can do it now and still get 1099s out or printed for 2013 for last year. You understand what I mean? So it's not like you have to have it set up ahead of time. You can do it after the fact, which is what I'm about to show you. Okay. So here it is. It's 2014. You got to get 1099s out for the prior year, 2013. You got to get them out by the end of the month. How do you do it? show you how to do it okay so I'm going to go into edit I'm going to go to preferences and preferences are little features you can turn on and off in the program we got tons of them there are all these categories of preferences scroll down to the bottom pick tax 1099 click company do you file you say yes and that's really all you do okay so I'm going to click OK and be done with that that's real simple now the two main things you got to worry about with uh, with getting this set up right is first of all you got to tell QuickBooks which vendors should get 1099s and you used to years ago have to do it manually you click on the vendor you go here you check them off you put the federal that's a pain you don't have to do it manually now there's a little wizard that I'm going to show you in a second the other thing you have to do is you have to tell QuickBooks which accounts which expense accounts on your on your chart of accounts list should go on to a 1099. Okay. In other words, which expenses are 1099 type expenses? Yeah. QuickBooks calls it mapping the account. Both the mapping of the accounts and picking which vendors should get a 1099 is real easy now. It's been this way for a few years. You go to vendors, you go to print, and again, you can do this after the year's over, like I'm doing it. E file 1099s, and there's this little 1099 wizard. You select that. And it's going to open up this little wizard that's going to allow you to, to select which vendor should get a 1099, verify that their address, their social security number is correct, um, pick which expense accounts are the type of accounts that you want to see on a 1099, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, review and exclude any payments that shouldn't be on your 1099, and we'll talk about that. I don't know if you know that, but debit card, if you pay your vendor with a debit card, a gift card, PayPal, or credit card, those should not go on a 1099 to the vendor. Only the checks and the cash do, because these things, they're going to get a separate 1099 from that merchant, and you don't want to have them you know, being 1099 twice for the same revenue. Anyway, then you're going to uh, confirm what the 1099s look like, make sure you're okay with them, and then you can print them or e-file them directly out of QuickBooks. So I'm going to click Get Started. So the first thing you're going to see is a list of all your vendors. This list comes from the vendor list. So in other words, the vendor center here, this list here is what's appearing here. So if you want to get a 1099 for an independent contractor, they better be on the vendor list. So that's one thing you got to understand. Got to be on the vendor list. Then you simply check off the people that you want to get a 1099 for. Who should get a 1099? Individuals that do work for you. Uh, also, perhaps companies, not corporations. They shouldn't get a 1099. But if you see this Elijah Smith, Heat, Aaron Moore, he says he's a company. But he's really just an LLC. 
And so therefore, he maybe even has a federal ID number. He needs to get it to 99 because he's just kind of working for himself under an LLC. He should get it to 99. Okay. So now QuickBooks tries to help you by telling you which expense accounts are the accounts that these vendors get pointed to. So in other words, all of Alex's checks get pointed to contract labor. So it kind of helps you decide who should get a 1099. AT&T, whoops, AT&T, welcome to Windows 8, right? <laughs> AT&T, uh, their checks go to telephone expense. That shouldn't be on a 1099, okay? So pretty much services should be on a 1099. Products should not. Randy Nickel, now let's... You see how he says multiple here? That's because he has a check, or maybe even more than one check, going to more than one expense account. So I'm going to click on here, and you'll see his checks go to two accounts. If you just kind of roll your mouse over, it tells you that his checks are going to equipment rental and consulting. I'm not sure if you can see that on the screen, but that's what it says. So if that's the case for you, equip, in this case equipment rental and consulting, I need consulting to go on the 1099 but not equipment rental. I don't want that. That shouldn't be on the 1099, okay? So in the next step, we're gonna be able to tell QuickBooks which expense account should go on the 1099 and which shouldn't. So I've already obviously checked a few of these vendors. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit to Scott Wells. He's our bookkeeper. His checks go to accounting. He should be on the 1099. I check the box. If you're unsure of who should get a 1099 or not, that's where you want to talk to your accountant or bookkeeper. But once you've figured it out, you check them here. I'm going to click continue. So the next screen actually gives you a list of everybody that you just selected, and it gives you the information, their name, their, whoops, I just love Windows 8, uh, the, uh, the ID number here, the address, and Anytime there is uh, an ID number or an address missing, you'll get this red block because you got to have that filled out, filled out. That's a required field if you're e-filing. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. It's a required field if you're printing too. So uh, let's go ahead and put his social security number on here. This is a real guy, by the way, Scott Wells, and this is his real social security number. No, it isn't. Uh, but anyway, he's cool. I like him. He's a nice guy. So uh, I hadn't seen him in years. So uh, address. Now, it looks like it's just a name, but when you click on that block, it's actually a full address block. So let's go ahead and click on it and put his full address here. Uh, let's see. Alta Vista Trail. And we'll make this Ogden, Utah. I think he come, I think he lives in Utah actually. But anyway, whatever. So once, and again, you just got to verify, got to make sure you have a tax ID number on there. If not, you can save and close this window, come back in later and fill it in later. Not a big deal. Okay. So now I'm going to click continue. And I'm going to make this uh, window show all accounts, and we'll come back to 1099 accounts in a second. Remember how I said you have to pick which accounts should go on a 1099, which expense accounts? Well, you'll see here that you can choose. These are all the accounts in your chart of accounts list, and you can pick and choose which accounts should go on a 1099. So see how I've admitted, omitted these from a 1099, but yet some of these others I've put on a 1099, and when you put them on a 1099, you can tell it which box to go to. I'm going to tell you right now, 999 times out of 1,000, every expense should go to the non-employee compensation. Okay? So if you, gotta, if you know it's going to be on a 1099, it goes in box 7 99 times out of 100. Okay? Now, this is showing me all of my accounts. I really don't care so much about all of the accounts. The only expense accounts that I care about telling QuickBooks about in terms of a 1099 are the ones that these vendors were written to. In other words, these are the only vendors that are getting a 1099 anyway. So I only really care about mapping the uh, expense accounts that are associated with these vendors. To find that out, that's what you do this, show all 1099, or show 1099 accounts. Now it just gives me the accounts that their checks were written to. All right. 
and you can see here that uh, we've got everybody for not we got everybody in box seven building repairs and maintenance says it's omitted but repairs and maintenance should go on the 1099 so I'm going to change this and make it box seven and then equipment rental now we should talk about that for a second equipment rental remember back here let me go back here go back up top here oh again I don't know that you can see this maybe you can but Randy uh, where it says multiple if you roll your mouse over it it's going to tell us let me roll the mouse over it here that it's equipment rental and consulting well equipment when rentals shouldn't go on a 1099 just consulting so over here I'm going to make box 7 just be omit these payments from 1099 then only the checks that were written to the consulting expense account for Randy will appear on the 1099 and not the equipment rental okay so after you've got this done click next now I don't know if you know this but debit cards gift cards and PayPal if you pay any of your vendors via debit card gift card or PayPal those should not be included on the 1099 because they're going to get a, a, a another 1099 from PayPal as an example uh, that has that information on it and you don't want them having to get two 1099s for the same income so you can view the payments that are included and then it, and you can change them it explains that you apply an appropriate notation so QuickBooks will exclude the payments from the 1099 miscellaneous form okay uh, and then afterwards you can view the excluded payment payments to verify they've been excluded now credit card payments if you pay your vendor by credit card that shouldn't be on a 1099 either because they're going to get something from the merchant and uh, QuickBooks automatically excludes those okay so I'm going to click continue and now you get the information that's basically going to appear on the 1099 so it looks like there's going to be one two three four looks like seven of them and look at Randy the total included on the 1099 is 1100 unmapped payment 699 total 1799 I can double click on it it takes me uh, to his transactions and that was actually one check we wrote Randy part of which was for his services 1100 and part of it was for equipment rental uh, which is uh, not supposed to be on a 1099 and because we did the mapping it's handling it correctly and only 1100 is going to be on the 1099 so we're almost done now you can either print or e-file your 1099s through the Intuit e-file service I'm going to click print you pick the year you want to file a 1099 for here's all the 1099s you can preview these 1099s now you can see they print out without any information in other words uh, they print out just the information we still need to purchase the 1099s you can buy them from Intuit or you can purchase them from uh, an office supply store it's real easy and then you press print and print the 1099s there so you do have to order the 1099s or buy them from the office supply store now one of the copies and you print multiple copies of them one you give to your um, one you keep one or two you give to the independent contractor and then one you send into the government the one you send into the government has a cover sheet it's called a 1096 you print it right there and the cover sheet has the total number of vendors and um, that get 10 1099s and the total dollar amount of all the 1099s added together it's just kind of a summary sheet okay not a big deal and so you print the 1099s print the 1096s I'll cancel out of here because if you'd rather you can go to uh, click this button and they have an e-file service there's a fee and it e-files uh, for you so you don't have to worry about that so I'm gonna click Save and close and that's it you can go you can go back into this wizard at any point so you can go in here and work a little bit uh, maybe check off some more of these click save and close and keep going back in until you're ready to get the 1099s out and again you got to do it by the end of this month uh, so I appreciate your time I know this one was a little long but I think it was important and I will see you in February